Would you turn with me to Revelation chapter 2? We're not going to speak very long because we've got chicken, warm chicken, sitting at the back. I don't know if you can smell it or not, but I can. If you want me not to preach very long, just put food out on the table. This could be a this could be a pattern. <laughs> Revelation chapter 2, the angel of the church of Ephesus write. The angel of the church of Ephesus. They don't know exactly what to do with this particular word, the angelos. This also refers to the pastor of the church of Ephesus. These things, says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. He's going to be talking to Ephesus. Now let me tell you about Ephesus for just a minute. Ephesus was one of the largest churches in the Roman Empire at the time. Rome, Alexandria, Ephesus. Ephesus may have been the largest church. The Apostle John... As he finishes up Revelation, God's going to let him off the island and he sends him back to this church. John calls himself, in 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, he calls himself the Elder John, which means that he has started to pastor. He was the pastor, according to church tradition and the church fathers, John became the pastor of Ephesus. After all the apostles had died... John took Jesus' mother Mary with him and went to Ephesus and he became the pastor there. And John, of course, is known as the apostle of love. The beloved apostle, the apostle of love, Jesus' best friend. It says that Jesus loved him. The apostle whom Jesus loved, he was the apostle of love. Here, God is writing to the church of Ephesus. This is where John is going to go back to. John's writing this letter. John had been the pastor of Ephesus. They put him on the Isle of Patmos. God's going to give him the vision of Revelation. Then he's going to send him back to Ephesus, the pastor again. He is the pastor of love. But God's going to tell this church, this the largest mega church in the Roman Empire, God's going to talk to this church. He sent the apostle of John, Jesus' best friend, to pastor this church. He is the pastor of love. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand who walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. And he tells you who the stars are. The stars are the pastors of these seven churches. He holds them in his hand. Jeannie Jan, come here just a minute. Jeannie, come here. This is an important story. This, I'm just going to preach about 10 minutes. This is going to be one of the most important things in the whole Bible. These things says, He who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, and we know the seven golden candlesticks are the seven churches that he's talking to. So the seven golden candlesticks are the churches, and the seven stars he's holding his right hand are the seven pastors. Look at this. He's holding them in his right hand. Wait. There. He's walking with them holding hands. Now, I can only do this with my wife. Amen. Did you hear what she said? Amen. (laughs) He can only do that with his wife. This is Jesus Christ walking among the churches, the seven churches, which are a picture of all the churches in the world in the New Testament at this time. The seven churches, the seven church ages. And he's got the seven pastors in his right hand. He's walking the church around. As he walks around, he's holding the church with his hand. And she's following him. (laughs) Now that's going to be important that she's following him. And I want you to get the picture of this. We always read through this and we're very business minded as we read Revelation because that's, you know, the end times, that's important stuff. This is a book about the love of the church. This is how much Jesus loves us. And he's walking, he's walking with the church hand in hand. And that's how the book starts. It's because I love you. Thank you. Okay, now look at this. To the angel, to the pastor of the church of Ephesus, write. 
These things says he who holds the seven stars, the seven pastors in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know your works. I know your works. Your labor. Your patience. That you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they're apostles and they're not. They're pseudo-apostles. They're false apostles. They've written false books of the Bible. And this Ephesus church has tested those and they said they're not, they're not the scriptures. They're not true. Those are not apostles. They're not even preachers or pastors. I know them. Gnosko. I'm very much involved in your works, he says, Gnosko. Your labor, your patience, that you cannot bear those who are evil. You have tested those who say they're apostles and they are not. You have found them liars. And you have persevered. You have patience. And you have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. You have labored, you have worked. He uses this word work and labor three times. The word work means to work. But the word labor means the hardest kind of work there is. This is ditch digging work. This is, this is oil field work. This is hay hauling work. How many of you know about hay hauling? How many of you have worked in the oil fields before? I mean, this is, how many of you dug ditches? Laid cement. Cement and digging ditches is the same thing, folks. He said, I know that you guys are working hard for me. You're doing good. You're doing a great job. You're working work, labor, labor. He uses the word labor twice. Work once. You have perseverance and you have patience. You're getting through this COVID stuff and you're going through this freeze and you, you, you're doing good. But verse 4. Nevertheless... I have this against you, that you've left your first love. Now, I want to take a look at this word left for just a minute. It's a fee of me. Oftentimes it means forgiveness. Oftentimes it means conditional forgiveness. But in this context, this is a bad thing. I have this against you. Now, if God's against you, that's not good. That's not a good thing. So we're going to use this in the context of this is not a good thing. So we're not talking about conditional forgiveness here. We're using it in a different context, a different word. He says, you have left your first love. Now, I want you to take a look at the definition of left for just a moment. Because here it is. To ask someone to leave. You've left your first love. That's Jesus. To let them go. To let him go. Now this is talking about us, not God. Okay. You remember the old joke about the couple that's driving down the dirt road in the pickup, the old pickup? He's on one side and she's on the other side. He's shifting gears and they're going down through there and she says, you know, we used to be so in love. He said, yep. He's a romantic fool. She said, things have kind of changed for us lately. He said, yep. She said, oh, I wish we could get back to the way we were. He said, yep. He just keeps driving. He looks over at her and he said, I haven't moved. <laughs> Who moved? The one that wanted the love. He's still the same way he's always been. Jesus Christ is going the same way. Jesus is going to go his direction. Jesus Christ has a plan for the world. Jesus knows exactly where he's going, when he's going, and how he's going. Who moved? And that's what he's saying here. If you want to be with me, you've got to follow me because I'm going this way. And if you want to be with me, you've got to go the same way I go. Look at the definition. To leave, to disregard. As we're walking with Jesus, all of a sudden Jesus takes off this way and we just keep going the same way we've always been going. Who moved? To be quiet. To stop talking together. Jesus, as he walks with his apostles, talks with his apostles, he teaches his apostles. They're having a whale of a good time, I can tell you. Anytime you're around Jesus, it's a lot of fun. To neglect or to go another way. As Jesus goes his way, 
we just go this way. Now, if you want to use this word to forgive in a bad way, you forgive and you forget, and he goes one way, and we just forget and go our own way. We've got our own agenda, and we walk off away from him, working for Jesus. Now, this is why I hate this song. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work. It's in the Baptist hymnal. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus. Sure enough, we're working. And he says, you're working. You're doing a good job. But you're working so hard, you just left your first love. Now, this is going to be on three levels this morning, and then I'm going to quit. The first level is personal. Me and Jesus. Me and Jesus. I get to working so hard for Jesus, and I get to doing my thing for Christ. I get to doing the church. Yeah, I, I get to work in my own personal life, doing my job that I'm supposed to do. And I neglect him and I f- fail to remember him. At the second level, me and my wife, or you and your husband. And you just gradually go apart. And we lose our first love. Working hard. Third level. The church in the United States of America. As we turn and we walk away from Christ. Okay, now let's take a look at this for just a moment. Nevertheless, I have this against you that you've left your first love. Remember, therefore, from when you have fallen and repent and do the first alert. Works. The first works. When you first got married, the whole time, the whole effort that you spent together was what? Loving each other. Talking to each other. Being ooshy-gooshy. Makes you sick. I just throw up a little bit in my mouth. (laughs) Your first works, or else I'll come to you quickly, and I'm going to remove your candlestick from its place unless you repent. Now, this is God talking to us. This is God talking to his church. And here's what he said. This is the cure. Now, listen carefully because I'm going to stop in just a moment. This is the cure. Jesus said, I want you to fall back in love with me. We have a business relationship with God in this country. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ has a business relationship with our Savior. We get up every morning and we talk to him for a few minutes and we tell him what we need. And we ask him for, our, for his help, which is okay. But if, the, if that's all you got, that's not okay. You get up every morning and you and your wife get up and you have this business relationship and he goes to work and you go to work and you talk to each other about what you're going to do that day and what you need that day and what the finances are. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. But that's all you got... And then we've got the church in this nation. Got a business relationship with God. And that's not okay. It's not okay with God. And it's not okay in your marriage. And it's not okay in this nation. It's not okay in this state. The church needs to fall back in love. And this is what he's saying. I want you to repent. In other words, turn. And go back the way you used to go. Because Jesus is going this way. And we kind of fell behind a little bit. And then we got to looking at what all needs done. And we just got to going and doing it. And where did he go? Where did he go? He's still going the way he's always gone. He hasn't slowed down any. He said, I want you to turn back around. And I want you to come and follow me. Now listen. We've got to fall back in love with Christ. We've got to get in love with God. We've got to enjoy spending time with God. We've got to enjoy Jesus. We've got to learn. We've got to relearn how to fall back in love with God. We've got to fall back in love with each other as our spouses. How are you going to do that? Jeannie Jan? I command you to fall back in love with me. Now, how's that going to work? 
That isn't going to work. <laughs> Even the business relationship will be over. <laughs> but if we spend time together, hi, darling. Hey, glove. If we spend time together, we're together. And it gets a little ooshy sometimes. <laughs> and sometimes we just spend time with God reading the Bible and just talking to Him because we don't need anything else. We don't want anything. We don't need anything. We just want to. We just want to get to know God. I just want to get to know Jesus again. Did you know that he comes into your house if you invite him to? Why do you think he went to Mary, Martha, and Lazarus' house every time he came to Jerusalem? They invited him. We started by getting up in the morning and we invite Jesus to come into our house. And we spend time with Jesus. We don't need anything. We probably need a lot. But we don't want anything. We're not needing anything. We're just going to talk to God for a few minutes and get to know him. I love your pink glasses. Those are so cool. I hadn't seen them until just now. <laughs> We're just going to spend time with God because we like him. Now that's a different concept. Because we like, not because it's our duty. I'm going to get up and read my Bible every single day because God has commanded us to stay in the Word of God. And I command myself to do that. That's not love. We get into the Bible and we read it just because we want to get to know Him. Just because we want to fall back in love with Him. When you fall back in love with Jesus, you will fall back in love with your spouse. When you fall back in love with Jesus, you'll fall back in love with your family. You'll fall back in love with the church of God in this nation. When we fall back in love with Christ, let me see. The Bible says God is what? Love. Now, I want you to just stay with me for just a minute. Verse 1. Who's John writing to? Church of... This had been his church. He had pastored this church. He was the disciple of love. He was the apostle that Jesus loved. He was the, the guy that loved God more than anybody else on earth. But they put him in jail. They put him on the island of Patmos and he wasn't there. And what happened to this church? They got to being busy for God. They got to working for God. And they forgot to love him. Now John's going to come back. God's going to send this guy back. He's going to go back. But here's John writing what Jesus says to this church. And he said, you guys, you left your first love. Look at verse 4. You left. Jesus said, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. They got their own agenda. And when they got their own agenda, they got in trouble. We've got to come back to loving Christ. It's not our job to win the world to God. It's our job to follow Christ and he'll win the world of God. When we're walking with Jesus, we will win the world of God. And if we're not, we won't. Jesus said, without me, you can do... Listen to this. Without me, you can do... Why our nation is in such trouble right now is because the church of the Lord Jesus Christ fell out of love with God. We have a business relationship with our Savior and our God. And we need to come back and just refine Him. He's still the same guy He's always been. He's still driving that old truck. <laughs> we moved. And we got to come back and just spend time with Him just because. I mean, what a waste of time to spend time with Jeannie Jan when I could be down here working and bringing people to Christ. What a waste of time. And yet, without Jeannie Jan, I have no job. You ever thought of that? 
Without Jesus Christ, we have no job. And so here's what Jesus says. This is, this is, we're building, we're, we're building our house. We're building our spiritual house. And whatever you build is what you're going to live in on this earth. So if we're going to build our spiritual house, one of the building blocks is love. And I saved this one for Valentine's Day. Because you give your valentine to your valentine, don't you? It's ushy. It's stupid. You hand little cards you write on there on the back of it, I love you, and then you hand it to your girlfriend or your boyfriend. That's stupid. And yet, that's what we call relationship. Isn't it? That's what's important. That's what's important. How many of you had COVID? I mean, I actually had it. Yeah, yeah, me and Jeannie had it. I really thought, honest to goodness, and you know what I'm talking about most of you, there came a day when I thought I was going to die. Literally. It was at night. I was in bed and I thought, hmm, I'm not going to make it. Got up the next morning. I, oh, I didn't get up. I opened my eyes. And I thought, ha! I didn't die. Literally. And then I got to thinking what was important. And the stuff I've been doing, it wasn't all that important. We need to find our God again. We need to get back to him. We're way, 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 way too busy. When you think you're going to die... It kind of puts it in perspective for you. You think, that was stupid. I came to the point with Paul. I count all things but garbage except for the love of Jesus Christ. He's the only thing worthwhile in this world. We must fall back in love with Christ. The way we do it is we just spend time with God just to spend time with Him. We read the Bible just to get to know Him. We're not trying to learn anything, although you will. We need to get back in our Bibles and just get to know who he is and what he thinks. And he isn't a great big granddaddy in the sky that goes, oh, well, that'd be okay. God so loved you that he died for you. Now that's relationship. That's what's important. And the rest of what we got is a business relationship. And it's not worth spit. Now, speaking of spit, we have a bunch of chicken back there <laughs> that we need to eat. We're going to stop and we're going to pray for just a minute. We're going to ask God, and I want you to ask God, please help me to find you again. Please help me to fall in love with you again. Please help me to love you the way I used to love you. Would you bow with me? Lord Jesus, praise unto you. You are God. Thank you for loving us so much that you would die for us. Thank you for loving us so much that you would resurrect for us. And Lord Jesus, would you help us, this church, this people, to fall back in love with you? Would you help our state, our, the church in this state, to fall back in love with you? Would you help the church in this nation to fall back in love with you? Would you pour your Holy Spirit out upon us, Lord? And would you lead us and guide us and help us to follow you? Lord, help us to follow you. You have commanded us to follow you and walk with you and talk with you and hold you. Lord, would you help us to do that? Would you help us to love you again and find you again? Help us to follow you again and just spend time with you. Help us, Lord. We need your help. And we thank you for that. God, we pray that you bless our marriages, our families. You'd help us to do what we're supposed to do, what the Bible commands us to do. And just love each other as we should. Spend time with each other. Oh, Lord, would you bring our children to Christ. We thank you. We praise you. Thank you for being here today. In Christ's name, amen. All right, now just stay at your tables for just a moment because here's how we're going to do it.
You have one bingo card at each table. Drag out your bingo card because this is going to determine when you get to eat. All right, now here's what we're going to do. We're going to play Bible bingo, and there's no numbers, there's just pictures. I'm going to call out the pictures to you, and when your table bingos, you yell bingo, and you get to go to get your food. Now, wait a minute. I forgot to tell you that there'll be no cheating. Okay, now, if you have a bingo, just leave your card the way it is because I'm just going to keep going until the next one bingo. So don't don't leave your leave your pieces on your card, and even though they bingo, leave your pieces there because I'm just going to keep calling numbers till you bingo. We're just going to keep doing that, and there'll be two or three tables that bingo at the same time. They get to go get your food. Do you have your cards? There's a card at each table. 